Hey, what up guys? The app that I made this week is an expense tracker where we can store the saved data in a Google spreadsheet. I highly recommend for you to watch my video on how to connect your Flutter project to Google Sheets before you start this tutorial. These days I'm pretty obsessed with this idea of using Google Sheets as your basic backend and so far we've made a notes app and a to-do list app. So now it's time to raise the bar a little bit and create an expense tracker. So the functionality we want to achieve in this tutorial is the ability to insert a new transaction as an income or an expense, then save this information on a Google spreadsheet, as well as the ability to retrieve the data that is already stored on the spreadsheet. Then finally, we want to summarize everything and display the total balance in a good looking card at the top. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and make sure in your pop spec yaml the only dependency we're going to use is the package called g sheets so this is the google sheets that we're going to use as our backend and let's create a new file called google sheets api and this is the basic class that we're going to start with so make sure you watch the video on how to connect google sheets to your flutter project because in that video i show you how to collect your credentials and your spreadsheet id which is needed to connect our project to the spreadsheet and in that video, I also showed you this basic init function, uh, which initializes our worksheet. And so this is where we're going to start our project. So if you go to the main function, let's delete everything below it and start from scratch. Let's create a new file called homepage.dart, which is going to be a stateful widget. And let's just put in a blank scaffold. So in here, let's just quickly create the UI for our expense tracker. So the basic layout I want is on the top, I want to show the total balance. And in the middle, I want to show a list of transactions. And at the very bottom, I want to show a small button so that we can add a new transaction. Awesome, so we're going to start with the UI for the top card. So let's create a new file for it. And then make sure to import your material.dart file. And let's create a stateless widget called top new card. New for new morphic because I'm gonna make this button look nice with a new morphic design. So once we create the stateless widget, we can come back to our home page and import it. And so in our top card.dart file, we can create the UI to separate out the code. So let's create the container and back in our scaffold, let's make the entire background gray. And I'm gonna create a print container of say height 200 and make the color just a little bit lighter. And we want to display some information here. So I'm going to create a column. And the first text widget I'm going to use is balance. Create another text widget below it. And for now, let's just put in a fixed string. So for example, like $10,000. But obviously in here, we don't want to display a fixed number. This number is going to change a lot. So we're going to introduce a variable called balance and create the constructor for this so that if we come back to our home page, we can now pass through the balance. And then below it, I also want to display the amount of income versus the amount of outcome. So the income and the expense. Okay, so I'm just going to use some columns and rows to lay this out. Let's use an up arrow for income and a down arrow for expense. And under the income, we're going to show how much the amount is going to be. And similar to the balance, the income and the expense, these numbers are going to change a lot, right? So we're going to create the variables for these ones. Cool, so this is the basic layout that I want. And I'm just going to copy in the full code for this file, which is the same layout, but I just polished it a little bit and made it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. This decoration that I just added in is what gives the card a new morphic effect, which is actually the very first video I ever made on this channel. So if we save this, again, you can get all this code for free from my GitHub below, so make sure to grab it from there. You can see the new morphic design there, it looks pretty nice. Now onto the button. Let's give it a height and a width of 75. And this is going to be a plus button. Make the color a bit darker.
and I want to make this a circle. Let's create a new file to encapsulate this code so that what we're working with is very nice and clean and organized. Awesome, which brings us to the middle. So this is where we're gonna have a list of transactions. So for now, let's just use a column and let's create what one transaction is going to look like. So I just want a horizontal container basically. I'm gonna use, let's add a size box at the top just to put a bit of a gap. And clip RX just to make the borders a bit nice and round. So we'll have the transaction name on the, le on the left hand side and then how much it is on the far right. So now that we've got the basic UI for the transaction, let's also create a new file called transaction.dart and encapsulate the code into this file. We'll just call it my transaction. And of course in this as well, this is just a class. So we want to pass through a couple things. So transaction name, also the amount of the money, and also is this an expense or an income? And let's create the necessary constructors for these. So this is gonna be our template for each transaction. Now, if we come back to our homepage, we can import our my transaction class, which is created and we're going to have to fill out these parameters. So for now, let's just do it as a fixed string. And one cool thing I'm going to show you here is depending on if it's an expense or an income. So for example, if it's an expense, then let's do a negative sign and a plus sign for an income. So you can see the sign changes accordingly. And we can take this a step further and also use the same logic to change the colors, so red for expense and green for income. And this will make it much more aesthetically pleasing as you can see there. So those are the basic building blocks for the transaction class, but I'm gonna copy in a more detailed version that I coded earlier. So again, you can get this code from my GitHub. The main things I just changed is just like adding an icon just to make it look nicer. Okay, so now that we have a transaction class, I want to display multiple transactions. And specifically, we want to display the transactions that are stored in our spreadsheet. So make sure to initialize our Google Sheets API when the main function is called at the very beginning. And I'm going to add in some variables. So the number of transactions a list of the current transactions and also just a boolean to keep track of the loading process. And in my last couple of videos, I introduced these couple of methods, count rows, which does exactly what it says. It counts how many rows we have in our spreadsheet. And then at the end of that method, it's going to automatically call load transactions. And if you take a look at this code, it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. We're going to for loop through it and we're gonna get three things. So the transaction name, transaction amount and the transaction type. And in our spreadsheet, we're gonna store it in the first, second and third column respectively. So in each row, we're going to go through and collect this information and then add it to our current list of transactions. And just to show you precisely what we're actually storing in current transactions is once we've read it from our spreadsheet, let's just print it to our console to see how it looks. And you can see there, there's our list of each transaction. Perfect, now let's get rid of this print statement. In the home page, instead of a column, we're going to use a list view builder so that we can dynamically create as many transactions as necessary. We're gonna to need to specify the item count, so that's easy. So Google Sheets current transactions and however long that is. And so what we're gonna pass through is go to the current transactions. And for that particular index, we wanna get we want to get the zeroth column, the first column, and then the second column. Okay, so if we save this, let's see how this looks. Uh, the reason why it's not loading is because it's loaded, but we need to set the state. 
And so this method is called start loading. Basically, we're just keeping track of when the loading has finished. And so in our Google Sheets API, we had that Boolean. And once it's finished loading, then the loading becomes false. So if the loading is false, in other words, the loading is complete, then we can set the state and cancel this timer. And of course, let's start this method at the very beginning of the build. So if the loading is true as well as the timer hasn't started yet, then we can start the loading. So this way we can set the state and display the information when it's done loading. Now it looks like the transaction name and the amount has kind of swapped around. So let's just clean this up. There we go, I think this should fix it up. And there we go, it displays all of our information, perfect. And just to add a nice little touch, we're going to make a new file called loading circle. And with this one, it's just a very basic widget. So a height of 25 and a width of 25. And the widget we're going to use is called a circular progress indicator. So this is going to just be a little loading circle. And so while we're loading up our data from the spreadsheet, if it's currently loading, then let's just display a loading circle. And then once it's done loading, we'll display our list view. Okay, so how does this look in practice? You can see there's a little loading spinning circle thing. And then once that's done, we can display all of our information. So this is really useful because it lets the user know that they should be waiting to expect some information. Now let's work on this plus button. So if you go to the plus button file, we need it to wrap in a gesture detector so that we can give it a function. And so if we come back to our home page, in our plus button, we can now add a method. So this method is going to be a way to add a new transaction. So that's what we'll call it. And the way I want to do this is I want to show a dialog so that the user can enter the details of this new transaction. So I'm going to show you just how to create a very basic dialog. And for the title, let's just say new transaction. And in the content, we can write some text in here. For the dialog, just to save us time, I'm just going to copy in the alert dialog that I made that includes some text editing controllers so that we can grab the user's input. So just to run you through the code, this is what it looks like, this is what I made. Just a switch to let the user decide if it's an expense or an income. You have to enter how much the transaction was and if they don't enter it, then we're gonna show a little error to let them know that they should enter an amount and also just a transaction name. So if we click this enter button, we want to display this new transaction in our list. So let's minimize all this to make it cleaner. If this button is pressed, let's create this enter transaction method. Now we haven't created this insert method in our Google Sheets API. So let's go to our Google Sheets API.dart file and we're going to use this method. So this is a way for us to insert a new transaction. And so this method requires the name of the transaction, the amount, and also whether it's an income or not. And so we're going to add it to two places. So the current transaction list that we have in our app, as well as appending the row to the spreadsheet. So let's give this a go. So if we hit the plus button and add in and add in a transaction, so $25 for a coding lesson, then you can see it shows up as a new list. If we jump back to our spreadsheet, you can see it's going to be imported there as well. Awesome, so most of the functionality is now complete. The last thing I'm gonna do is to develop more of this top card here. So I wanna display the actual balance that corresponds to all of these transactions. If you come over to the top card, the parameters are already the three things, right? So balance, income, and expense. And so to calculate this, it should be not too difficult. So I'm gonna, first of all, add in a method called calculate income. And basically what this does is it's just gonna check through all of the transactions and if it is an income, then we're going to add the amount into our total income variable. Okay, so in the, in the third column, if the transaction type is an income, then let's add it through. And because the values on the spreadsheet return a string, we're going to pass it and convert it into a double so we can calculate this number. And we're going to do the same thing for the calculating the expense, very similar.
So now if we come back to our homepage in our top card for the income, we're going to calculate the income of all of our transactions and convert it to a string and same thing for the expense. So calculate the expense and convert it to a string. Cool, so it should be zero initially and then once it's all loaded up, it should calculate the appropriate values. Good, so you can see the income with the $500 and the expenses adds up to $60.97, which means the, to calculate the balance, this is just a subtraction of these two numbers. So income minus expense and then convert that to a string. And we should actually add a dollar sign as well. And just to illustrate that this is actually working, we can enter a new transaction and see if the balance updates itself. So let's add 100 and it's actually working. So that's all that I had planned for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll come around to help you out. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters!